Good afternoon, dear students and learners. You all are watching us on E V D channel number nine, and I'm Kusum Prasad. So, dear students, today we are going to learn social science for class nine students, and the topic is forest society and colonialism, part two. And to teach this uh, subject, our expert is Mr. Vagish Kumar Jha sir. Sir, आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है. नमस्कार sir. Thank you, Kusum. Sir is uh, from Learning and Development Lead uh, School Net India Noida. So sir will explain you about this chapter. इससे पहले कि हम ये सत्र शुरू करें हम बता देते हैं आप किस तरह से अपनी प्रतिक्रियाएं भेज सकते हैं अपने फीडबैक भेज सकते हैं और इसके बारे में जान सकते हैं तो आपके कोई भी क्वेश्चंस हैं कोई भी क्वेरीज हैं कोई भी फीडबैक है तो आप जरूर सेंड करें आपको हम बता देते हैं हमारे वेरियस मीडियम्स यू कैन कॉल अस ऑन अवर फोन नंबर दैट इज एट एट जीरो जीरो फोर फोर जीरो फाइव फाइव नाइन यू कैन नोट डाउन दिस इज फ्लैशिंग ऑन योर टीवी स्क्रीन्स एंड यू कैन आल्सो ईमेल अस ऑन अवर ईमेल आईडी डी दैट इज डी टी एच डॉट क्लास नाइन एट द रेट सी आई टी डॉट एन आई सी डॉट आई एन सो लेट्स बिगेन अवर सेशन एंड वी मूव टू अवर एक्सपर्ट मिस्टर वाघीश सर Sir, what all we are going to learn in to, uh, today's chapter, sir? Thank you very much, Kusum, and thank you, viewers, uh, for being here. Uh, this is the second part of this uh, chapter. The, in the first part, we had done something interesting, mm -hmm. and uh, my as a teacher, my main focus is not to actually uh, teach the textbook, which is there, and the students can uh, read it by themselves. So. Uh, we are looking at some of the conceptual ideas and even the contextualizing the whole thing in such a way that the textbook makes better sense so for example kusum hmm. you uh, your name uh, derives from a very beautiful flower it's a colorful flower hmm. that comes out and this flower is basically uh, a wild flower hmm. and uh, uh, the oil of the kusum oil a uh, kusum flower that that mm. uh, bud that comes out after the flower first of all kusum is a very colorful flower it has been uh, sung in various of the folk songs it's a folk uh, uh, flower and uh, then the seeds of that flower is uh, so costly mm. that they are used in uh, all kinds of uh, medicines and all kinds of uh, other products mm. this used to be the part of our life and this is the part of our industrial life also but not many people know about it so what we had done is that we had tried to find out the idea of forest uh, as not something which is alien so what we had done and a quick recap is this that forest is not just lots of trees it is an entire ecosystem this ecosystem that consists of all kinds of plants grasses creepers climbers it also has water bodies like uh, rivers streams ponds there are land forms like marshes and swamps and it has birds animals insects microorganisms and mushrooms and various other things uh, that uh, all together kind of say and denote what a forest is that was the first thing that we tried to do the second thing that we wanted to draw the attention of our students is that humans also live in and around the forest it is not something that it is somewhere else and we have nothing to do with the forest and this person the picture that you are seeing is amazon tribes last surviving who was called man of the hole he died on 30 23rd of august 2022 just recently and with his death an entire tribe vanished he had never come out of the uh, of the forest from the amazon forest and he was the last surviving member of the forest my point that i wanted to drive home was that that there are large number of people who live in the forest and even today uh, one has to be uh, aware and careful about what is there in the the forest people are not uh, somebody who are alien to us they should not be alien to us if you consider all the forest people who all are there nearly 250 million people live in and around the forest in india of which estimated indigenous adivasis or tribal population stands around 100 million so if you consider them as a, a, the state they are the 30th largest country in the world hmm. so when we talk of forest people 
we should not talk of some kind of a uh, idea that is foreign to us. The forest is very much in and around us. Forest provides us not just timber, bamboo, grass, it also provides wood for wool, uh, uh, for fuel, charcoal and uh, also packaging materials, fruits and flowers. So, you see all kinds of uh, uh, broad leaves, uh, things that comes out from the forest which is used for packaging. Many of the uh, thalis and plates and other things are being made of these kind of forest products. More, moreover, it has minerals and metal ores that come from the forest. So, we are surrounded by forest here and now. In this room that we are sitting here, this table, uh, this chair, this, uh, uh, this camera, the stand, all these metal materials, they have come to us from the forest. forest yeah. So, forest is not something alien, forest is mm. not something different that we should not be concerned about. We are talking not of a foreign country, we are talking of something which is the part of us. We are the part of us. Now, where did all this come from? We will see and we will explore this uh, in this uh, uh, chapter. Now, I am coming to the main part of the chapter. And uh, so, imagine a burglar who is coming in your house. Hmm. And that person is uh, like, he has to carry all kinds of valuable stuff from you and he makes, he make to, to, he needs to make his own transportation. Itni sari cheeze hain, he wants to take it hmm. from your house. Hmm. To wo bol raha hai, aap bana ke do humko, jin, jis mein hum usko transport karke le jayenge hmm. kahin. Then, he also is, so that, that is why the railway came, hmm. the colonial people wanted to carry out all kinds of stuff from here, from the, the cotton, rubber hmm. and all those kind of things. And for that, they needed transportation and that is why uh, the, uh, the railway was introduced by them. Then, that burglar likes to drink tea. He, need, he needed rubber, hmm. he, needed, he needed cotton and wheat and for that, where will they get it from? In order to get all these things, they must clear the forest. So, they destroyed the natural forest and they started commercial cultivation. I am trying to put the three main things that uh, uh, led to uh, this and that, that will help you to understand this chapter better. And the third is that they were fighting with each other. There were World War I, World War II that took place and in order to exploit their own war uses, they needed lots of timber. So, either if there are two warring uh, uh, countries, then they will either destroy the timber so that nobody should be able to use that timber for their uh, advantage or they will uh, use that timber for them. You see this kind of a thing happening in many countries during the First World War. Uh, and uh, so, what they did is that initially uh, they destroyed the entire jungle so that Japanese should not be able to use it. But then, once the Japanese took control of it, they wanted to use those kind of timbers for their own war purposes. So, they needed the resources uh, to be exploited from the uh, country. So, they wanted railways. They wanted uh, the stuff also to be cultivated, specific kind of things like tea, like rubber and other uh, wheat and other things. So, they wanted to clear the forest. And third one is that they destroyed the forest for the use of their own war purposes. These were the three things that led to a huge deforestation and that is how uh, that you can see is that colonial powers can be seen as such a burglar. Am I uh, making sense? Yes, Kusum? sir. Yes, All exactly. Right. You are very clear. Your points are so clear and uh, uh, all our students or learners who all are watching us, uh, they are uh, I think उनको interest आ रहा होगा इस chapter में क्योंकि आप बहुत ही अच्छे से खूबसूरती से chapter को बता रहे हैं। Thank you. And if there are any questions, I will be very uh, uh, happy to take those questions. So now see that uh, the uh, modern civilization is linked with deforestation. Hmm. And when I am talking of colonial period, sometimes it kind of gives an uh, impression that ke pehle kabhi hua tha. Hmm. You know, so saal, dear, so saal pehle hua, but that is not true. This is happening even now. And if you try to relate to that what is happening today, you will be able to understand. So, what is happening is that lots of forest diversity disappeared very fast during the colonial period. That was one important thing that happened during that time. The period of industrialization 
uh, suppose that 1700 to uh, 1995, we are told that 9.3 percent of the world's total area was cleared of the forest. It was about 13.9 million square kilometer of forest that was completely cleared during uh, these 200 years. And for industrial use, cultivation, pastures and fuel wood, all these things were cleared and the picture that you see is this how systematically the jungles were cleared and these are the logs, they are called logs and this is the word from which the word log book has come in. Hmm. So they, are, they have to keep a hisab of all that, kitne, kitne lakdi kaate, un lakdiyon ka kya hua, ye sari chihye jo hai, uska hisab jis mein rehta hai, usko log book kehte hai, aaj bhi offices mein aur kahi bhi aap jate hai, koi saman aata hai, to usko log book mein aap dete hai, this word derives from that uh, logging Log. that used to take place at that hmm. time. Okay, so deforestation, itni lakdiyon ki kya zarurat thi unko? और लकड़ियों की जरूरत है वो काट रहे हैं सारी चीजें डिफॉरेस्टेशन हो रहा है दैट यू हैव अंडरस्टूड मगर ये डिफॉरेस्टेशन करने के लिए उनको जस्टिफिकेशन चाहिए दे नीडेड अ जस्टिफिकेशन फॉर सेइंग दैट ये अच्छा काम कर रहे हैं हम दे कुड नेवर से दैट आई वांट टू डिस्ट्रॉय योर जंगल सो एंड यू रिमेंबर दैट द ब्रिटिश कॉलोनियल और कॉलोनियल पावर्स एज्यूम्ड दैट दे हैव कम टू द कॉलोनीज to on a civilizational mission. So they have to, if, if they are doing something wrong, if they are doing something so destructive, they will be accountable for that. So in order to justify whatever they were trying to do, they wanted to uh, find some alibi. They wanted to say that why they are doing it, why it is important. So they painted forest as unproductive wilderness. Use nahi hai. So that was one of the first justifications that they presented. Then they projected tribals mm. who were living in the jungles mm. or uh, uh, around the jungles that ye to backward log hai and they don't care for the resources. Jungle is so full of such resources and they are going and they are uh, uh, not using it properly. So they must be taught how to use the jungles properly. You will see that is ka implication kya hai aage. Mm. Chalke. And then the, the, so these, these were the two kind of justifications for them. They, the tribals used to live in the forest and they had to be dispossessed from there. Hmm. On what grounds they will be dispossessed? So hmm. They said that you are destroying the jungle. Hmm. And the, but the real cause was to bring the forest under cultivation to enhance the income of the state. Hmm. More and more land comes into the cultivation which means that more and more uh, crops are being grown and more and more jungles are being utilized for their own purposes and that is what was the main uh, reason for them. The whole forest which used to be the life for the tribals was nothing but a resource that needs to be exploited by the industrial uh, powers and colonial powers. And you will see the entire chapter is trying to explain and spell out this whole process. I am not going into the specific details of it. I am only trying to present before you the uh, a broad sweep of the ideas that uh, basically underlined the entire process of colonialism and their machinations in the tribal, in the forest and, and resulted in the destruction of the forest. So, they are uncouth people, tribals do not understand, they have their beliefs and uh, they, they thought that forests were spirits and all that. The scientific forestry became a garb for them. That forestry uh, must be scientific by uh, in nature. So, uh, Brandis, Dietrich Brandis was brought as the Inspector General of Forest in India. These are uh, specific detail. He set up the Indian Forest Service in 18. 64. Remember that there was a big rebellion in 1857. It is immediately after that they wanted to and the rebellion, one of the major uh, uh, centers of rebellion was in the forests also. So that is another thing that they wanted to tame the forest. Forest is untamable for them. No? They did not understand how to uh, uh, get into the forest and tribals and uh, you remember Tatiya Tope uh, carried out the entire uh, struggle against uh, the British from the forest mostly and that was the reason that they were not able to catch him. 
So, the, the first Indian Forest Service was uh, set up in 1964. Immediately within a year, uh, they formulated Indian Forest Act in 1965 and in nine, eight, uh, sorry, 1865 and in 1878, the Act divided immediately forest into three categories. Those three categories that are still uh, 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 there. So, there, there were reserved forests, then there were protected forest and then there was a village forest. These three kinds of felling tree and grazing uh, got restricted so that forests are preserved for timber production. All those people who lived on the forest, all those people who lived around the forest, they were debarred from getting into the forest. It was only the village forest or some part of the protected forest that they could go into. And they were, they were charged by destroying the forest, whereas the actual thing was that they considered the forest only as their resources, they wanted to use it for the timber and they cleared it for their own cultivation. You will see how. Am I making a, a sense Kusum? Am I okay yes, till now? Okay. Now look at the tribals on the other hand. They worshipped forest as the giver. Hmm. They, they, the tribals and tradition, they had their traditional myths and belief systems. Uh, the, the agricultural festivals uh, were there to show respect for the river, uh, for the forest, for the mountains as the providers. They uh, looked after all the natural resources within their own boundaries. They depended on the forest, the, they used wood for their houses, grazing, cattle, collecting fruits, roots, hunting and fishing became, all these things became illegal once they said that this is a mm. reserved forest and this is the protected forest and all that. They used forest, forest products, roots, leaves and uh, tubers for many things. They also practiced shifting cultivation. Shifting cultivation is where they kind of burnt a small patch of the forest and then that uh, uh, made it very fertile and then they used to do the uh, agriculture. This later on, now that when people are doing the research, they have found that this is one of the best practices that can be adopted, but Britishers said that they are destroying the forest. They did not understand the ecosystem of forest where uh, if you are uh, putting into the fire, then forest does not get essentially destroyed, but the, the root system is so strong uh, uh, there is that it grows up uh, as a fresh kind mm. of a thing. Mm. Nevertheless, so the tribal and, and even today Sarhul uh, is about to come now. Mm. These are the, uh, the, these are the uh, uh, festivals that are being uh, celebrated by the tribals where they worship the trees, where there are totems and there are um, other uh, uh, natural things. The, so, uh, there, is a, uh, there, there is a forest, there is a hill in the forest that is Niamgiri forest, say for example, it is a major site of struggle even today in Orissa where the bauxite mining is happening and tribals are saying that this is my king mm. and this is my uh, raja and you cannot uh, exploit it. This is the way of saying that they owned the entire thing. They considered it at their own. Their hunting is happening and they are taking care of the fact that the animals are not killed. You will be surprised to know that uh, uh, in the tribal practices, even today, the male species are killed, hmm. not the female species. Okay. Because they knew that if the female species are killed, then the reproduction will mm. drop and mm. they will be at the receiving end. And they had an acute understanding of everything. So tubers and shoots and collect uh, the uh, uh, dry fruits that are coming out, they used to collect it. Mm. They never, say for example, they never cut the, the green uh, uh, tree ever. Mm. They were only collecting the dry and uh, 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 dead wood from there. The uh, tribals? The tribals. Okay. So that is, that is what was totally ignored and they were said mm. that they are the people who do not mm. have the idea, they do not understand how it can be done. Their hunting was pre uh, uh, prevented, mm. they were hunting for their food mm. and they were carefully hunting. But the Britishers who came here, your practices are dangerous and ours is a fun. Mm. You see the picture here, the British uh, uh, officer is taking pride in killing all these uh, animals and prized animals as the great act of a bravery. Hmm. 
So for uh, the for house building or the fuel, they could take wood from the protected village uh, only from the protected village. Mm. Shifting cultivation was banned, and this customary practice of hunting prohibited by the forest law. Mm. So on the one hand, the villagers and the tribals were prevented from uh, uh, doing the hunting for their own subsistence that was uh, that was necessary, and they uh, indulged into these kind of hunting which was just for the fun. So that is the double standard that I am just trying to present before you. Now, uh, if say for example, what is going to happen? If you have to pay tax for the fresh air, hmm. how will you react? That what would happen if you are to pay tax to visit a nearby park? Hmm. Fresh air lena hai aapko, hawa leni hai, to aap park mein ja rahe hain, aapko tax pay karna padega. Or imagine that aapko agar road par chalna hai, to aapko permission leni padegi. You hmm. cannot just go uh, uh, go out of your house and walk uh, uh, on the road. Hmm. What will happen? How will you respond to that? It will you be will very be... irritating hmm. or that what is natural, hai, uh, we are restricted to it, uh, we are stopped. Yes, yeah. so you are irritated, you are angry, you are angry. That is exactly what happened that communities such as Maria, Murya, Gunda, Dhruvas hmm. and Bhatras and Halabas who lived in Bastar, they rose in rebellion. This hmm. jungle unka tha, ye sab hmm. kuch unka tha, and then you, you are being prevented hmm. from growing there. So that is the reason for the rebellion that took place. I am only talking of the Bastar, hmm. but this kind of a rebellion hmm. took place in various other uh, areas. And in many areas, uh, the struggle to have control over Jal, Jungle and Jameen is still going on. Hmm. Today you will see that there is a road that is being constructed and that road, in order to construct that road, you mm -hmm. have to fell the trees. So there is a, a, a law where it is said that if you, fa if you uh, uh, drop 10 trees, you will have to uh, uh, plant 25 trees. Yes. Similarly, in Mumbai, mm -hmm. uh, you see that there is a struggle going on for the RA kind of colony. So what I'm trying to say at the end is this, is that to understand this uh, uh, colonial policy towards the forest, one has to understand the requirements of the modern times and how this modernity is essentially against uh, those kind of interests that are there, the interest of the indigenous people, the interest of the tribals and this struggle can be seen even today happening. But in order to understand the colonial period where this process was at a very large scale, at a very fast pace, that is where uh, uh, if, you, if you read this chapter with this kind of an approach and with this kind of a mindset, you will be able to understand the entire process and mechanism. Exactly, sir. Vagish sir, thank you so very much for describing this chapter, Forest Society and Colonialism to our students and learners. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, Kusum. Thanks. Thank thanks you, so dear much. students thank and you. learners, uh, for watching us on EVDA channel. So, stay connected to EVDA channel. Our next session will be for maths. Hamedi uh, Jajat. Namaskar.